Hello, uh, my friends, my name is Sukhwan Singh and I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma and uh, I have, I think I have uh, resolved this Oak, Oak Island money pit uh, mystery totally. Oak Island is 140 acres, 57 hectare island in Lunenburg County on the south shore of Nova Scotia, Canada. The tree covered island is one of about 360 small islands in Mahoney Bay as you can see on the on this uh, map and rises to a maximum of 35 feet 11 meters above sea level located 200 meters from shore and connected to the mainland by modern causeway the island is privately owned Oak Island is noted as the location of the so-called money pit and the site of over 200 years of treasure hunting Repeated excavations have reported layers of apparently man-made artifacts as deep as 31 meters. So what I'm trying to solve here is uh, this um, whole mystery of a money pit and what it is all about. As you can see there's a um, location of uh, Nova Scotia and the coordinates are given. Uh, I picked up uh, this stuff from Wikipedia. This is a picture of, um, of one of these uh, shafts going down. Uh, as you can see it's say 31 meters 102 feet just remember this uh, number 31 meters 102 feet so most of the people and treasure hunters are aware of a money pit but I'll give you some background okay in um, 1795 18 year old Daniel McGuinness after observing lights coming from, an, from the island discovered a circular depression in a clearing on southern eastern end of uh, of the island this island is uh, we're talking about this oak island adjacent to the clearing was a tree with the tackle block on one of its overhanging branches um, uh, tackle block is like a pulley system so they are they, they found something over there McGinnis uh, with the help of friends John Smith in early accounts uh, Samuel Balls uh, um, and Anthony Wagon excavated the depression and discovered a layer of uh, flagstones a few feet below so while they are uh, while they are digging they, they found this uh, flagstones uh, on the pit walls there were visible markings from a pick so as you see they found they, they started found, uh, finding um, some markings as they dug down they discovered layers of logs at about every 10 feet so every 10 feet they are finding uh, some logs and so they you know they are perplexed what is going on and they keep on digging but they abandon excavation at 30 feet which is 9.1 uh, meters I got this from Wikipedia this initial discovery and excavation was first uh, briefly mentioned in print in a Liverpool transcript in October 1856 a more complete account followed again in the Liverpool transcript the Nova Scotian uh, um, British colonist and the history of Lunenburg County the last source based on Liverpool transcript articles about eight years after 1795 dig according to the original articles and the memories of Wagon, another company examined what was what was to become known as the money pit so the money pit is uh, is this uh, name of this uh, this tunnel the Onslow, Onslow company sailed 300 nautical miles 560 kilometers from central Nova Scotia near Truro to Oak Island with the goal of recovering what they believe to be secret treasure so a lot of people tr are trying to get uh, to reach uh, and uh, get to this uh, secret treasure they continued the excavation down to approximately 90 feet uh, and found layers of logs or marks about every 10 feet and layers of charcoal putty and coconut fiber at 40 50 60 feet which is 12 15 and 18 meters according to one of the earliest accounts at about 80 or 90 feet they recovered a large stone bearing an inscription of symbols as you can see over here in this picture there's some kind of uh, inscription on uh, on the, on the on the slab okay one person translated them as saying 40 feet below 2 million pounds lie buried the main symbols currently associated with the 40 feet down translation and seen in many books first appeared in true tales of buried treasure written by explorer and historian Edward Rose Snow in 1951 so 1951 some guy has uh, tried to translate uh, this uh, whatever is inscribed on the slab 
um, but what let me please let me explain to you that this is not the true story Edward Rowe's Snow translation doesn't give any details how he reached this conclusion in this book he states uh, he was given this set of symbols by Reverend A.T. Campton of Cambridge Massachusetts nothing more is known about Campton's involvement in the Oak Island tale most of his books are some pirate fiction read the book names and judge yourself so one of the name uh, says mysteries and adventures along the Atlantic coast secrets of the uh, another one says secrets of the North Atlantic islands another one says true tales of pirates and their god so you, you you can you can judge it you know what kind of names and what kind of translation this person can do let me explain The Truro Company in 1849, uh, which re-excavated the shaft back down to the 86 feet level, where it flooded again. So they are trying to they they, they are trying to dig through uh, the, the shaft, and it is getting flooded again and again. According to the 19th century account, the drill. This is all happening uh, in 18 and late 1800s. Uh, so this is we are talking about uh, more than 160 years around plus the drill or pod auger passed through a sports platform at 98 feet so this uh, drill uh, is uh, like you know the, the guy is uh, moving it by hand a 12 inch uh, head space 22 inches of what were described as metal in pieces so they found that this auger brought out some metal pieces 8 inches of oak, another 20, 22 inches of metal, 4 inches of oak, another sparse layer and finally into clay for 7 feet, 2.1 meters without striking anything else. I want you to um, just take notice of this, uh, this slide and look at the numbers. There has been wide-ranging speculation among enthusiasts as to who originally dug the pit and what it might contain. Later accounts say that oak platforms were discovered every 10 feet, but the earliest accounts simply say that the marks of some type were found at these places. They also say that there were tool marks or pick scraps uh, on the walls of the money pit and that the dirt was noticeably loose and not as hard packed as the surrounding soil. So just remember, uh, this is very important the fact that uh, they are mentioning that uh, the dirt is uh, very and, uh, and soft, it is not hard packed soil. One expedition said they found the flood tunnel at 90 feet and that it was lined with flat stones. However, Robert Dunfield, a trained geologist, wrote that he carefully examined the walls of the re-excavated pit and, and was unable to locate any evidence of this tunnel. So one guy, Robert Dunfield, he he has done a uh, um, lot of work and uh, found that there was no evidence of tunnel. Natural sinkhole theory doesn't hold ground due to the platforms at few feet. So they 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 are finding these platforms. So it is not naturally um, made. Critics argue that there is no treasure and that the parent pit is a natural phenomenon, likely a sinkhole and natural caverns. Suggestions that uh, the pit is a natural phenomenon, specifically a sinkhole or debris is a f in a fault, date to at least 1911. So since 1911, they are trying to say that this is a natural phenomenon. There are a number of sinkholes on the main uh, mainland near the island, together with underground caves to which the parent uh, booby traps are attributed. The appearance of a man-made pit has been attributed partly to the structure of sinkholes. This filling uh, would be softer than the surrounding ground and uh, give the impression that it has been dug up before. So they are uh, basing this fact that uh, you know somebody dug it uh, before and uh, you know some uh, and then they put the soil back. Okay, the main reason against this theory is that the wood blocks at every 10 feet were found, some with coconut shell here. So the natural sinkhole theory sinks very badly. There are many other theories, one which says giant siphon. This led to the theory that the beach had been converted into a giant siphon, feeding water from the ocean into the pit via a man-made tunnel. As weird as it sounds, uh, but uh, I'll go over it. 
A sample of this material, as a sample of this material, was sent to the Smithsonian Institution in the early 20th century, where it was conducted, uh, concluded that the material was coconut fiber. So they found coconut fibers over there in the in this uh, whole uh, tunnel, which is called Money Pit. Um, the origin of these um, fibers uh, has been a source of heated debate among Oak Island researchers. Since coconut trees do not occur naturally in Canada, this is a point to be noted that the, the coconut trees do not occur naturally in Canada. Carbon dating was conducted on a sample in the 1960s and returned a date of 1200 to 1400 uh, AD. So, you know, they, they, they found that this uh, could be uh, from 1200 to 14, uh, 1400. Let's go to Europe. I will take you to Europe for a while and follow Vikings or people who read as per the Old Norse language. Okay. It is recognized that the Vikings could never have begun raiding or indeed settling beyond Scandinavia if they had not first developed about four centuries earlier highly, defective, uh, highly effective boat building and navigation skills. So they wouldn't have gone anywhere without the, you know, without the navigation skills and without their boats. The Vikings from for you know, from Old Norse uh, is called Vikinger, were seafaring North Germanic people who raided, traded, explored, and settled in wide areas of Europe, Asia, and North Atlantic islands from the late 8th century to the mid 11th century. 8th century is like 1790, and mid 11th century is uh, is like 10, uh, 1050, 1080, something like that. So let's follow the route to, to North America now. As you can see over here, um, this slide shows uh, that they, they started from here in, uh, in, um, in, in their homeland and they are going from one island to another. They, they went to Greenland and went and touched the Baffin Islands and then they went down to, um, to this Nova Scotia. Couple of other maps and options. Here you see this um, um, Baffin Island shows on the left hand side on the top, Greenland shows in the middle and you can see by the arrows where the Vikings went. Nova Scotia and the map on route of Vikings. So Nova Scotia is directly on, on the map where the Vikings had uh, have uh, had been. So they they traveled to the, these places. So they also had like uh, some small boats and um, these small boats used to go from one small island to another island which was nearby. What was going on with the Vikings between the 9th century and 12th century? So between 9th and 12th century they made a lot of uh, voyages to far away places. I'm going to explain in detail. You know this theory, uh, this, uh, this money pit is going on for um, 300, around 300 years, um, so 200, 200 plus years easily. So it will take me some time to explain and uh, so I I'm, I'm want to be as detailed as possible so that once and for all I put this thing to rest and the mystery is solved. Geographically a Viking age may be assigned not only to Scandinavian lands which is modern Denmark, Norway and Sweden but also to territories under North Germanic dominance. Mainly the, the Dane law including Scandinavian York, the administrative center of the remains of the kingdom of uh, Northumbria parts of Mercia and East Anglia. Viking navigators opened the road to new lands north, west and east, resulting in the foundation of independent uh, settlements in the, sh in the Shetland, Orkney and Faroe Islands, Iceland, Greenland and Lyons Ox Meadows. A short-lived settlement in, in, in Newfoundland. So just remember this Lyons Ox Meadows is a, is a short-lived um, and then there's a short-lived settlement in Newfoundland which was around 1000 AD. Many of these lands, specifically Greenland and Iceland, may have been originally discovered by sailors blown of course. So what they're saying is that uh, these uh, people, uh, while uh, going from one place to another place, uh, got off chart from their, um, from their uh, planned, uh, I mean they didn't plan any route, specific route, but you know, they, they, go, they got um, blown to a different uh, course and they reached a different place. They also may have been deliberately sought out, perhaps on the basis of the accounts of sailors who had seen land in the distance. So, you know, some sailors who had seen the land before, so they discuss and they go, let's go over to this island or to this island. So they are scanning the, the landing areas. The Greenland settlement eventually died out, possibly 
possibly due to climate change. So just remember this uh, Greenland uh, settlement eventually died out, possibly due to climate change. The Viking explored the northern islands and coasts of the North Atlantic, ventured south to North Africa and east to Russia, Constantinople and Middle East. They, raid, they raided and they pillaged uh, but also engaged in trade, settled wide-ranging colonies and acted as mercenaries. Vikings under Leif Erikson, here to Erik the Red, reached North America and set up short-lived settlements in present-day Lianxos Meadows, Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. So Lianx Ox Meadows uh, from French Lianx Ox Meadows or Jellyfish Cove is an archaeological site on northmost tip of Newfoundland in the Canadian, prov uh, Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Discovered in 1960, it is, it is the most famous site of Norse or Viking settlement in North America, outside of Greenland, dating to around the year 1000. The Anxious Meadows remains the only widely accepted instance of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact. So this is only, you know, this, uh, this um, you know, when they found the settlement, they are basing this thing on uh, that this is the only contact between uh, Vikings uh, after this uh, year 1000 uh, so this is the only contact they are saying it is notably for its uh, possible connection with the attempted colony of Vinland established by Leo Friction uh, around the same time period or more broadly with Norse ex exploration of the Americas it was named a world heritage site by UNESCO in 1978 let us check their long ship so Vikings had this uh, boats which were very very long there were two distinct classes of Viking ships, the long ship and then there was uh, something called the short ship. The long ship intended for warfare and exploration was designed for speed and agility and was equipped with oars to complement the sail as well as making it able to navigate independently of the wind. So they had huge uh, sails which used to propel the, the boat to go, f you know, so they have to put m less effort in, in rowing the boat. The longship had a long and a narrow hull and shallow draft to facilitate landings and troop deployments in shallow water. So just remember this thing that uh, they, can, they can go into shallow waters very easily. The longship had a long and narrow hull and shallow draft to, to facilitate landings and troop deployments in shallow water. Longships were also double-ended. Symmetrical bow and stern along the ship to re reverse direction quickly without having to turn around. This trait proved particularly useful in, uh, in northern latitudes where icebergs and sea ice pose hazardous to navigation. Hazards. You know, so, there was, uh, so this uh, icebergs were posing uh, hazards to the navigation of uh, these long boats. And uh, you know, so this was um, uh, the same side that the boat had, almost same size, uh, the front and the back. So it was very easy to move. Uh, so the long ships were fitted with oars all along almost the entire length of the boat itself. So the oars are like the, you know, when you row a boat you need an oar. Later versions had a rectangular sail on a single mast which was used to replace or augment the effort of the rowers, particularly during long journeys. The average speed of Viking ships varied from ship to ship but lay in the range of 5 to 10 knots and the maximum speed of the long ship under favorable conditions were, was around 15 knots. While longships were used by the Norse in warfare, they were troop transports. So remember this thing that they were troop, troop transports, type of longship. So there's a type of uh, longship called uh, skyd. Skyd meaning that which get cut through water. Ships were larger warships consisting of more than 30 rowing benches. Ships of this classification are some of the largest longships ever discovered. A group of uh, these ships were discovered by Danish archaeologists in uh, Roskilde during development uh, in the harbor area in 1962 and 1996 and 97. The ship discovered in 1962, Skuldelev 2 is an oak built uh, sky long ship. It is believed to have been built in the Dublin area around uh, 1040. So just remember this, uh, this uh, year which is 1040. Skuldelev uh, 2 could carry a crew of uh, some 70 to 80 and measure just less than 30 meters in length, uh, 30 meters 98 feet. 
very close to our 102 feet which we saw earlier on. In 1996-97 archaeologists discovered the remains of another ship in the harbor. This ship called the Roskilde 6 had not yet uh, been fully investigated and full details are not available. It is however thought to be around 36 meters, 118 feet. So they didn't, didn't, they didn't have um, any specific template uh, for the design. So just remember that they are making the boats, whatever they saw earlier on, they are basing it, uh, the, the boat they, which had already been built, they're, the next boat is ba based on, on that type of design, but there's no template, there's no measurement thing. And has been dated to, to the mid 11th century, which is about like 1050 AD. Remember that uh, repeated excavations have reported layers of apparently man-made artifacts as deep as 31 meters. So when they keep on digging this uh, so-called money pit, they are at till, till about 102 feet. They they keep on finding uh, artifacts like something is like something is is buried there, but it is not. Long long ships, the oak planks are wide about. 250 millimeters including laps with the less tapered at bow and stern planks were 25 uh, millimeter thick the 26 heavy frames are spaced at 850 millimeter in the center each frame tapers from the turn of the bulge into the in -veil. this suggests that the knees were used to brace the upper two or three top side planks but appear to have rotted away the hull had um, a distinctive leaf uh, shape with the bow sections much narrower than the stern quarters. There were nine wide uh, planks per side. So as you see over here from the middle of this mast, uh, there were nine on the one side and nine on another. So remember that uh, when they're digging uh, this uh, so-called money pit, they they what they dig it to, to they, they dig it to, to about like 90 feet which is uh, almost approximately what it is mentioned over here like nine planks per side the viking shipbuilders had no written diagram or standard di written design plan the shipbuilders pictured the long ships before its construction based on previous builds and the ship was then built from the keel up the keel and, and stems were made first the shape of the stem was based on segments of circles of varying sizes the keel was an inverted t shape to to accept the gar garboard planks. In the long ships, the keel was made up of several sections spliced together and fastened with three, three nails. The next ship, uh, the next step was building the strakes. The, the lines of planks joined endwise from stern to stern. Nearly all long ships were clinker, also known as a lap strake belt, meaning that each hull plank overlapped the next. Each plank was hewn from an oak tree so that the finished plank was about 25 millimeter thick and tapered uh, along each edge to the thickness of about 20 millimeter. The planks were were readily hewn so that the grain is uh, approximately at right angles to the surface of the plank. This provides maximum strength and even bend and even rate of even rate of expansion and contraction in water. The hull is made as such uh, with this clinker uh, clinker oak uh, planks so that uh, you know they can move a little bit uh, uh, if, if they have to in, in while going in on a voyage in the water where long timber was not available or the ship was very long the planks were but joined although overlapping scarf joints fixed with nails as the planks reached the desired height the interior frame uh, which is called of a tox and the cross beams were added you can find all this thing in Wikipedia. I I took uh, most of the details uh, from Wikipedia. Frames were placed so close uh, close together, which is an enduring uh, feature of thin planked ships uh, still used today on some light weight wooden racing craft, such as those designed by Bruce Farr. Viking boat builders used a spacing of about uh, 850 millimeter. Part of the reason for the spacing was to achieve the correct distance between rowing stations and to create space for the chests used by North sailors. So I'm, oh anyway, I'm going to the next slide in order to explain to you um, um, timber analysis of timber samples from Viking longboats showed in the second par paragraph, if you see below, 
It says that an analysis of timber samples from Viking longboats shows that a variety of timbers were used, but there were there were, there was strong preference for oak, which was associated with Odin, wooden in, in Viking mythology. So just remember that uh, on, uh, you know the, what they found in the money pit is is something um, which has um, um, oak wood. So in Viking mythology, um, they are based on their mythology. They are using more and more oak in building their ships, in building their long long boats or long ship. Oak is a heavy, durable timber that can be easily worked by adze and uh, axe when when uh, green, wet, unseasoned. So when the oak is um, is not yet ready, they can uh, just scrape off. It's easy to build. Okay, the next side, the, the sail was held in place by the mast, which was up to 16 meters tall. So, remember this thing that is 16 meter tall, which is uh, which is very tall, um, uh, not too tall, but uh, but considerably tall. Uh, the sail, its, its base was about uh, 25, uh, 250 millimeter to 180 millimeters. The mast was supported by a large wooden mast step called curling, that was semicircular in shape. The curling was made of oak and about 700 millimeter wide and up to seven six meter long in the uh, in the large ships. It's usually heavy heavily tapered uh, into a joint with the in internal uh, keelson, although keelsons were by no means universal. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that uh, the design of the boat is not. Uh, they didn't have any template to to go on, so they just looked at the previous boat and they keep on building um, these boats, these long ships. Long ships uh, were not fitted with benches, so one of the main um, this is one of another main points to be noted is long ships were not fitted with benches, so nobody was sitting on a bench and and rowing the boat. Just like uh, these days, we sit on a bench in in a, in a boat. Uh, there were no benches earlier on in these long ships. When rowing, the crew sat on sea chests, so there were small chests uh, where they used to keep their stuff that would otherwise take up space. The chests were made the same size as were the perfect height of for the Viking to sit on and row. So they used to sit on the small chests, and uh, and then they were they had these panels on their back, which were like log woods or oak panels. You know, long ships had hooks for oars to fit into, but smaller oars were also used with crooks or bends to be used as oar locks. Oar lock is like uh, where you put this uh, thing to to row the boat. If there were no holes, then a loop of rope kept the oars in place. So, uh, if they had uh, no hole, you know, or they they used to just put uh, some um, rope around it and and um, like make a loop around the uh, around the around the oar. So see this uh, slide I have prepared this picture if you see that um, you know if you see that these are planks and they're about 9 to 10 feet to, uh, wide and in the next slide I will show you how these uh, people used to sit. So the Viking are sitting facing each other and as you can see in this picture like eight of them are, are used to face each other you know this is a, a long boat where 70 to 80 people are riding on the boat and it, it takes considerable effort in order to row this kind of a boat see this is how they are sitting and see this middle part over here right where this is what is considered as the money pit uh, um, floor which is not a floor in fact, it is a uh, it is a um, this back support panels or logs, which is against which they used to row. So see these these two guys are sitting over here, uh, you know, on their on their backs. But there are there is a um, I haven't shown in the picture, but there's another guy so is sitting uh, on the back on the on the right hand side of this left guy and on the left hand side of this right guy, and they're holding the same. Or and uh, you know it, it takes um, a long uh, huge effort in order to row this uh, boat as you can see these back support wooden panels are wrongly considered as the floors explained below in detail slides I'm going to explain in very much uh, detail uh, 
that what it is all about so if if i if i make this picture uh, vertical uh, this is horizontal picture then you will get a uh, general idea what i'm trying to explain here so so the floors of the money pit are not floors but these panels which are 9 to 10 feet apart this is the main thing okay the vikings used to put their backs on these and row with oars from the square holes you can see the small square holes you know there's a cross section I got from uh, from the internet uh, right next to the upper side of the boat as seen here so you can see that uh, you know they have uh, th this is how it used to be now let us visit the evidence first three teen teenagers the teenagers continued burrowing down so these are uh, the people who found the so-called money pit they they followed the walls of the previous hole in doing so the boys found that the pit had narrowed to seven feet in diameter so it is not that wide they also noticed that the work of the predecessors imprinted in the clay of the tunnel wall were the impressions of pick axes so they are thinking that somebody has already been there somebody had all already been uh, digging through this uh, uh, money pit so called money pit but that is not true nobody nobody went uh, and broke those uh, wooden um, wooden panels uh, in, in uh, before these guys uh, started doing it the the axe marks are uh, are the marks uh, you know from um, from the vikings when they were using uh, it as a boat it, it is a boat you know so what to expect more you know they are using swords and axes uh, in order to cut things they need to make uh, uh, f fish catch fish you know whatever they are doing you know at the depth of 10 feet the boys discovered a layer composed of rotting wood timbers the timbers spanned the width of the hole forming a wooden platform the ends of the timbers had been driven into the sides of the tunnel wall to firmly anchor the structure by all means this structure is uh, not any money pit or any structure uh, this is a mistakenly this is mistakenly um, called so um, but actually all these uh, timbers and uh, and the, the floors they are finding is are the wooden platform against which the vikings used to sit and row the boat so what i'm trying to say here is uh, is uh, the this is a boat which is uh, vertical this is very important this boat is vertically vertical and i will explain to you how it came into that position as you will see in other, my couple of other slides just as before the enthusiastic excavators were again disappointed after taking out the the barrier the boys found a two foot pocket of air followed by soil that had settled below tunneling down to approximately 20 feet the boys encountered another level of wood timbers nevertheless they continued toiling in the pit removing one barrier after another in hopes to claim their mysterious reward when the teenagers pulled away the second platform of wood timbers only to find another layer of soil staring back at them at a depth of 30, 30 feet one of the laborers hit a solid object removing the soil the crew found that another timber level had been installed inside the tunnels they keep on finding these uh, they keep on finding these uh, uh, timber levels uh, of these uh, these floors what they're calling floors this time however the men noticed the remnants of charcoal scattered around the platform the charcoal is uh, was used for uh, for cooking something you know it is not uh, it's not mis that thing is used by the vikings digging 10 more feet the enthusiastic men of the onslow company found themselves standing on yet another shelf of horizontal timbers this time rather than charcoal the diggers observed a sap like substance along the seams between the logs the sap like uh, thing is uh, to keep the water tight whatever was uh, stored beneath must have been worth the trouble of encapsulating the tunnel for protection Burrowing another 10 feet, the team encountered something they would never have thought possible. Top another platform of timber was scattered the fibers of coconut shells. So they found coconut shells and then they are thinking that somebody went uh, and uh, went down and did something over there, some, something they, they hid over there. From a 60 foot depth uh, where the coconut fiber was found, it would take the men another 30 feet of digging and the removal of two additional timber barriers before they would make a significant discovery. There at the depth of 90 feet beneath the surface of the tiny Canadian island, the various team of fortune seekers uncovered their first precious stone. So they found a slab, 
and the stone slab said something uh, which is actually is a it most probably is a language from uh, the Baffinland area uh, from this uh, Nunavut region the, if, if, if you see in Wikipedia the, this is the same language which they use you know Vikings were not carrying anything from from their homeland why would they carry a stone slab which will say that you know there's a, some treasure below when in fact there was nothing over there they didn't they picked up the slab from um, from one of the towns they they visited along the way you know they have been to greenland baffinland and then they reached this nova scotia according to kruger the you know this guy is uh, I'm, I'm picking up the stuff from wikipedia so this kruger guy who's uh, using an auger initially only confirmed information that the men already knew at a depth of about 98 feet the auger came in contact with a layer of spores approximately six inches deep following the log surface the auger sunk through one foot absent f absent of any material this was consistent with Boggan's uh, past experiences with the pit after every wooden platform the excavators found a pocket of air from dirt that had settled below so you see this whole uh, ship is standing vertical so based on the gravity the 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 soil between each uh, of these platforms uh, will fall down to the platform itself and uh, um, so there it will have a pocket of air okay go to the next slide the probe was cast to 111 feet beneath the surface as the depth of the auger hit another platform of timbers although no additional gold was retrieved from this drilling the device did produce a further confirmation of oak and coconut fibers so they're finding these coconut fibers i tell you right now the coconut fibers are are the fibers which are filled in the pillows of the vikings the viking have to have to row the boat on their back so they need some back support or you know so or to sit on some some kind of a cushiony surface so so they they have this coconut uh, fiber stuff this this thing is a 1000 years old so they, they, you know so just remember that uh, they are rowing the boat against these wooden panels which are mistakenly called floors okay new tunnel so if you read the whole story so if they found uh, uh, first the water present in the shaft was salty so they they, they dug a new tunnel and they found that uh, the water is salty it's the second level of water rose and fell with the tide so they know that the water is uh, although these uh, although simple these observation had profound implications previously the company thought that the money pit was being inundated with water as either part of the complicated trap or as a result of the natural water table now the team knew that somehow it was the surrounding sea that flooded their excavation so there is uh, water coming into this uh, pit With the water held behind uh, the coffer dam, the crew uncovered remnants of a previous dam as well as five peculiar vent openings. So they found five openings, tracing uh, back to back to the money pit, so-called money pit. Actually, it is a it is a long ship, Vikings long ship, which is standing vertical over there. Okay, so at the depth of approximately 153 feet, the drilling again uh, came in contact with what the team perceived to be a loose metal beneath the supposed metal of Augur encountered the same iron barrier and could not descend any further. So by the by the end, they, they reach uh, this Augur range, uh, reached a, a place where it cannot go any further. Why it cannot go any further is uh, simple. There is a there is a uh, the, the metal uh, metal from the iron or the you know the for the at the to to join the end of the boat they had some metal pieces so this is so there is metal of course there is metal to be found and then there is uh, axes and uh, swords of the vikings so so that is uh, what is uh, uh, if it is it is there this is what it is the metal is from the axes and swords and uh, the side of uh, of the boat uh, to to keep it joined joint at the one end uh, please take a look at this uh, this is a picture which is self uh, you know describing how 
the the shaft look like how the money pit, pit looks like as you see over here um, they, they found the slab over here and this is a picture from the from Oak Island money pit area you can find this thing on uh, on in w Wikipedia or if you are a researcher on this subject you can uh, definitely pay attention to this okay this is how I have uh, made the boat horizontal please take a, a look at this again okay you see this opening over here which is a tunnel the flood tunnel is actually the place where the shaft is for the mast you know for the for the mast of the boat I have uh, placed the boat uh, um, horizontal the shaft horizontal to the money pit horizontal so you can get a a general idea what I'm talking about here. This is another picture. It, it shows the the uh, it shows um, see you, you, the the sail is holded by uh, timbers, and this uh, this thing is uh, this thing is what is uh, perceived as uh, as the um, as the five uh, you know tunnels which are feeding the money pit actually it is the ropes and the, the timber itself which is still clinging onto the boat uh, and for 1000 years it is uh, it, it was there and I'll explain to you in detail how it came over there okay you see this is uh, one of the pictures and I I'm one picture I made um, uh, of this model of the boat um, just to demonstrate as you, see, you can see uh, where the mast is and where these panels are this is a picture uh, taken from the top of this model which I'm going to use to explain later on and this is the this is how it looks if you put it at put it vertically this is if you if you were coming from the top which it looks like one one floor after another floor after another floor which is a, which is not a floor but a panel against which vikings used to put their backs and row the boat so here is your solution right over here i will explain to you in detail much more in detail you can see how they're sitting in one of these pictures i took from the internet and uh, so there are many so these are long ship this is uh, one of the long ships they, they found uh, buried somewhere in Norway you can see how it is it's one of the replicas somewhere I took this picture from the internet okay why did the long ship ended uh, deep inside I will explain to you this uh, in, in detail as much as possible so there are no more theories about this thing okay actually it only moved by a few meters only that part of land was under water and the long ships were designed to go into shallow waters why there was water so deep inside here is the main reason that part was under water and very close to the beach at the time of medieval warm period what is medieval warm period how did the water reach that far the, if you go on the internet and wikipedia you can research this thing the medieval warm period uh, was a time of warm climate in north atlantic region that may also have been related to other climate events around the world lasting from about uh, 950 ad to 1250 ad just note the years over here despite substantial uncertainties especially for the period prior to 1600 for which the data is, is scarce the warmest period the warmest period of the last 2000 years prior to the 20th century were likely occurred between uh, 950 and 1100 so this is a, a period when the when the water is uh, the water levels have risen the ocean waters were risen for a few inches hence the boat was able to go somewhere what deep looks like it is deep but it's not that deep for the boat radiocarbon uh, uh, dated the box score in, uh, in Sargosa sea shows that the sea's surface temperature uh, was approximately one degree centigrade cooler than today approximately 400 years ago so in uh, around 1600s uh, the sea temperatures were cooler and the cooler part is called a little ice age so there was something called little ice age between 1200 and 1600 uh, 
AD. Uh, and uh, 1700 years ago, it was uh, w one degree warmer. 1700 years ago, we are talking about uh, uh, year 700 and onward. Um, 1700 is like um, uh, 1000. Uh, 700 is about 13. Seventeen hundred years ago, uh, one thousand plus seven hundred is about three hundred uh, year three hundred, uh, approximately one c one degree centigrade warmer than today. Okay, one thousand years ago, the medieval warm period was about one one degree centigrade warmer than today, which is uh, why there was water on that island. Indeed, this is the main reason that global warming or global uh, climate change uh, is in one of the examples of global uh, global climate change global warming so the water from the from the greenland and other uh, areas uh, the icebergs melted and it uh, increased the water to go on the island uh, as i will explain to you more Okay, let us uh, see what was Little Ice Age. So, before that I want to emphasize that uh, between 1950 and uh, 1250 there was a period uh, which was called Warm Medieval Period when the water was 1 degree centigrade higher and then later on from 1200 to 1600 e e uh, on, uh, around that time it was called uh, Little Ice Age. There is no consensus regarding the time uh, when the Little Ice Age began, although a series of events preceding the, the known climatic minima has often been referenced. In the 13th century, pack ice began advancing southwards in the North Atlantic. So there are, um, uh, in the 13th centuries, like uh, um, 1200, uh, year 1200 something, Pack ice began advancing southwards in the North Atlantic, as did glaciers in the Green in the Greenland. Anecdotal evidence suggests expanding glaciers almost worldwide, based on radiocarbon dating of roughly 150 samples of dead plant material with roots intact collected from beneath ice caps of Baffin Island and Iceland. You know, one guy Miller he has written this account. He has done some research. It's on Wikipedia state that uh, cold summers and ice uh, growth be began abruptly between uh, 1275 and 1300 following by substantial intensification from 1430 to 1455 so there was a warm period followed by a cold period of couple of uh, 3 to 400 years if you see this uh, uh, this graph from wikipedia this shows a warm medieval period which was about close to if you see the close to 1000 year AD 1080 it is almost touching 2 degrees centigrade higher than the normal at the time and the little ice age you can see it was uh, it was like um, 1 degree easily 1 degree um, 1 degree more uh, cooler than the current uh, uh, current temperature at the time you can see the movement uh, of uh, so during the medieval uh, warm period the icebergs uh, moved down and uh, if you see you know i'm showing you the movement of uh, of uh, uh, vikings and also the move movement of this iceberg so this whole uh, area is pushed uh, pushed down with this geolo geological uh, transformation what happened to the longship's fate? The crew probably got killed fighting locals or went deep in the land to look for prosperity. They returned back to the ship with far fewer men to sail. Couldn't do it. Ship that long takes enormous effort to row. Ship is stranded at the landing site for the next 1000 years. See the next slide to see the effect of warm climate 950 to almost 1200 AD and then little ice age from 1200 AD onwards till 1600 AD. The ship is pushed upwards and the sail get broken and caverns are formed with loose soil and water underneath. The ship is still tight on the hull side and remained like that until the treasure hunters took treasure hunters broke the side of the hull and it collapsed due to age of the timber and oak. Affected also by the constant tunneling by treasure hunters of money pit. So the thing is that uh, 
you know th there was early on when the uh, medieval warm uh, period came there was uh, no water in, on the on that part of uh, of the island and because of the weight of the because of the weight of the water and it was very loose there was already caverns below it the weight of the water shook the boat and the boat uh, one side uh, it was tilted very badly um, because the earth below one side of the boat moved down and it is same uh, you see in when uh, when there is a lot of uh, torrential uh, rains then you see the you know the side of the road uh, uh, falling down uh, you know you can see a uh, small sinkholes and uh, you can see the effect of uh, of weather you know you can uh, you know that uh, the side of the roads go down same way if the boat was uh, if the uh, if when the boat was there the side of the island went down little bit and then which uh, tilted the boat and it it fell down and tilted to one angle this is what happened uh, you know this is uh, the the boat is uh, as you can see the boat um the boat is affected by the by the the break in that um, the break in in uh, in the caverns and the whole land goes down as you can see the movement of icebergs and the boat is uh, slowly and slowly pushed down and it becomes vertical clay silt from the ocean current starts moving in depositing from the water currents and iceberg movements cavern formation due to push of the ground and soft sand and mud as this land was originally not under water a few hundred years before warm medieval period because it was not under water so when the water went on um, onto the onto the land it became uh, uh, heavy and it fell down which uh, made our boat go down this is what happened to the long ship's fate so the long ship uh, became vertical Yeah, and then uh, the sail fell down, and uh, the sail is still there, and the sail ropes and timber um, for for centuries it is pushing into the soft sand and made some kind of a tunnels, but it is actually the timber from in the sail. As you can see in this uh, diagram, what happened? Direction of the sail and ropes fall throughout 800 years. So 800 years, these ropes are pulled. down into into the ocean and uh, it is not that far from uh, from where the boat is so called five tunnels are the place holders on the sail and ropes attached to the sail so these are the ropes attached to the sail which looks like the some some say there's a pumps five pumps which are uh, feeding the feeder system to the money pay guys i tell you right now this is not a feeder system this is not any pump which is uh, feeding the boat on the money pit it is the sail and it is the ropes which are which are have pulled through soft sand and for centuries after medieval warm period after ice age they have made some kind of a uh, area around them which is hardened and looks like uh, water is seeping through it and you can be judge yourself uh, so every time they 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 dig to the money pit the water comes right right to it because of the water is coming through the mast area where the mast was and also from these uh, um these timber woods which are uh, uh, used in the sail uh, so the, so the structure is uh, and this parchment uh, they found some kind of a cloth this is a sail cloth or the cloth of uh, of some vikings you know i'm going to list the items found to put sense to where the items belong in the whole story picture so far uh, the whole picture um, remember the coconut fibers they are the back support pillow stuffing with long duration and rowing sitting against almost flat surface back needs support you everybody knows that The slab found it's most likely picked up from the Baffin Land region along the voyage. Please see that Canadian Aborigines speak very different language and the written characters are very similar to what is inscribed on the slab. Here is an example from Wikipedia. 
Iniquitut written characters. Iniquitut is from Canadian Nunavut region. If you see the characters, they will are very uh, similar to the characters found on the slab. Again, they are not carrying any slab from their own region, from uh, from Europe. Um, why would they um, um, bring any slab and say this? Um, because this is not uh, this is not any money pit. I mean, uh, there is no treasure found there. Uh, they, these uh, these uh, people were probably killed by these Vikings were probably killed by the locals or there were very few people left to, to row the boat the boat was destroyed after standing there over there for a couple of years they couldn't go back whatever happened the boat is still there that this is what is what is called um, uh, this uh, tunnel which is called money pit in fact you have seen um, by my demonstration um, that it is a uh, uh, I have a demonstration on another um, movie I made about this which uh, clearly shows uh, how the boat was affected and what happened. So you see this is where the mast was in this picture. Um, the mast uh, from uh, and the wood from the timber is click still clogged in the channel. The long ship is standing vertically and hence there is no treasure pit or the Ark of Covenant. Please see the model and demo by Sukhwan Singh. Okay. Most likely this mystery is solved and after my detailed explanation if you still believe there is a fortune to be made by disturbing the longship I will say try your luck. The metal pieces which are making noises when the auger goes uh, below are from the boat inside uh, seam on one end and probably some axes and swords. The reason is the Vikings if they had any treasure at the time of longship landing was probably looted by their killers. I mean you have to think uh, you know, they, these guys are killed by 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 some someone and um, that is why they couldn't go back and if uh, they couldn't go back the, the ship was there for for two to three hundred years in, in that uh, uh, that uh, area that re that vertically uh, kind of kind of vertically aligned at the time before the icebergs and uh, this uh, snow this ice age pushed it in totally into this uh, uh, vertical position where it is right now. They are not they were not carrying any treasure. Another main reason is this is not a buried treasure. First of all, as you have explained, this mystery is completely solved by Sukhwan Singh. If there are questions about the charcoal, iron, and wooden nails, your guess is right. As right, you need coal to cook, nails to hold the wood, and all the tight glue thing is to make the boat watertight which it was until someone made a hole with an auger and water came in. One more thing I want to add, this is not an alien job. I give credits to Wikipedia wherever the details were picked from. The credits are given to the page research scholars and ed editors of Wikipedia. And I also have these two videos uh, in this uh, slides uh, and I found it on the internet and uh, posted by Christopher Ong Tong who posted this uh, YouTube links and um, further whoever created the 3D movies in this uh, YouTube videos I give credit to these people because I am using it in my explanation.